welcome to the very first Film Session Saturday. My name is Bianca Rhodes, and I am so elated <laughs> to be here um, and have all you wonderful people here who have influenced my life in so many ways. So to have all of you on this stage right now is a beautiful blessing. So I promise I won't get emotional. Okay. Um, but I must start with these intros. So Robin Hickman is the CEO and executive producer of Soul Touch Productions, a television, film production, youth development, programming, and community partnership consulting organization. And then after her is Daniel Bergen, a multiple Emmy Award winning senior producer and partnership manager for Twin Cities Public Television, media educator, and 2001 Bush Leadership Fellow. And next we have Craig Rice, is an entertainment executive, entrepreneur, educator, award-winning producer and director who is nationally recognized for his distinguished career in the music industry, commercial, television, and feature filmed industries. And last but not least, <laughs> Pete Rhodes, the president and CEO of Urban Mass Media Group, a cultural communications company, and civil circle Emmy recipient for his dedication of over 30 years in media. So this panel, can y'all give it up for this panel, please? <laughs> all right. So we had a series of questions, and we all get to pick five. So the very, very first one is, how did you come to choose this path? So who wants to go first? <laughs> Thanks so much, Craig. <laughs> How did I choose to come this path? It's real easy. Uh, I, I uh, migrated here from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, there I was a, uh, a producer of sorts of events and programs, and my uh, sister, uh, my niece's mom, had came up and saw the city and said, hey, look, it's a, a nice place to be. Uh, a lot of open space for the kind of work you do. Uh, and uh, so I came up and saw that the opportunity to create content, create op options and spaces uh, for communities of color, for my people, uh, was wide open. And uh, I had a clear canvas of how I could uh, make that painting. And uh, so we did. I uh, came up and uh, started uh, doing events and the rest is history. Who wants to go next? Go ahead, Dan. You have the mic. Okay. <laughs> hold the mic. Um, that's a great question because I'm. I love origin stories as a comic book fan and a and a storyteller. Um, you know, I I love art. I love cinema. I probably watch too much movies and TV and. <laughs> My wife would say, when I ask her, do you remember this show? She's like, I was reading a book, I think, when you were watching that show. Um, but so I was always taking media in. And pretty early on, I started noticing you know, that I wasn't being reflected in a lot of what I was taking in. And while I enjoyed you know, The Little Rascals, I always felt a little uncomfortable with some of what I would see in terms of how, how um, we were reflected in media. So I think that planted a seed in what we would eventually do. Um, but I was also making media at a really early age. And from maybe fifth grade, middle school, I was already kind of learning early video and film uh, technology, working, kind of teaching actually and leading um, classes at an alternative school. So, so I started really early and I'm just lucky that it's led to an actual career path. I would say this, you know, similar to Dan, um, Starting early and having those visions of possibilities in media making early. Um, growing up in an organization that my father, um, Bobby Hickman, co-founded, the Inner City Youth League, where youth from the from the neighborhood, black youth, um, in the community were exposed to so much in the power of the arts. But I, at an early age, again, loved storytelling, and we had video production and. I just loved it, you know, because as young people, we could tell our stories and again, and of course, being influenced by my great uncle, Gordon Parks, who showed us and told us we had to take our rifle place behind the camera because that truly was the power. The power was behind the camera. 
if we really wanted to see the true, authentic, powerful, beautiful representation of ourselves. And so, honestly, coming by that, um, you know, seeing what Uncle Gordon did, but then he inspired his nephew, my dad, and the work that took place and the opportunities that took place at Inner City, but also my dad and others in the community who were part of Black Voices, which was a show that was done at public television when public television had the initiative for communities to come into public television show stations and um, take their rightful places in television stations back in the, in the 70s. And so as a little girl, I always said, I want to work in public television. It wasn't, I want to make movies like Uncle Gordon. I want to work in public television as a little girl because I could go into those state, that television stations at Channel 2 and see how it was done and see my people making the television shows. Um, I actually, I, I didn't actually, I guess I kind of grew up as an artist. My oh, parents yeah. believed in art, so it was, we, my mother can draw. Um, so I think it was, since I have nine brothers and sisters, I think drawing was kind of a, an activity that we did that didn't cost anything. So we sat at the table and we'd draw, and then we all play instruments, and so music was part of it. We went to the symphony and went to performances. And my mother and father didn't believe in children's movies, which is, I, I'm not sure that's a good thing, but um, so we, they take us to adult films, and so I remember at five, they took us to see Stalag uh, 17, which is a, a, um, a film about prison war, and I said, who does this? I love this, because I remember, because I couldn't sit in the seats and watch the movie, so I had to stand up, and I said, I want to do that, whatever that is, and so my mom encouraged me to uh, study theater and, and the whole thing, and then gradually, and then actually Robin's father, was in, in that organization, I would go there, because he, he, uh, we, we would make, it wasn't so much we made things, as he encouraged you to make things, encouraged what you did, which I needed, and then as I was playing music, which I did in this town for a long time, um, Gordon did Shaft, and I said, oh, so black people can actually make movies, oh, that's, and so that was the eye-opener for me to say that I was gonna go into filmmaking and TV making and, and the rest of the areas of entertainment, so. Wonderful, wonderful stories. Awesome. All right, so my sec second question is what sacrifices, choices, et cetera, put you in the position to begin this process um, and put you where you are now? So I know there's a lot. That's a lot, but do the best you can. Well, I mean, I think that you, first of all, I don't think you can grow without burning. Uh, so the sacrifices are part of the pain of this. Um, I never went to a prom, <laughs> you, know, I, you, know, you know, there was not a lot of dates early on in life, that kind of stuff, but I, there's, there's poverty, you know, and it, and it's self-inflicted poverty. You just decide not to do this or not to make this kind of money because you need to do it to get the credit. If you can't get the cash, get the credit. Um, I've been married a few times um, and I'm not proud of that, but I have. Um, so I think there's a series of things that you do, but I do think that all those sacrifices ultimately are part of a bigger picture because life is about, not just about yourself, it's about the other people that are around you and what you give. And God sends you here for a specific reason and your reason needs to be to serve and work with others. So. You know, I think the word sacrifices, it's interesting. Um, but it is, and God, you know, you said it's God's calling. You know, um, as I probably am as emotional as you are Bianca, to sit in this space um, in the presence of these people. Right now, this is almost very sacred. But when you say sacrifices, um, I, was, I think I've often talked about uh, the consequences for having the courage to do the right things. As I sit here next to Dan and I, and I reflect on the work that we were called to do um, at TPT with Don't Believe the Hype, the sacrifices that were made to do it the way it had to be done to ensure that you would be sitting where you're sitting and that Essence would be standing where she's standing and the many others and the pushback of saying that young people of color will take their rightful place behind the camera and in front of the camera. Um, those sacrifices that sometimes resulted in I didn't get to pursue all of the things that I dreamed of doing when I was a teenager but that was okay. I would do it all over again, or bucking back and saying, no, this will be for them. And it resulted in 
some consequences, but I would do, the, do it all over again. Because if it's not about insisting that you go beyond anything that I could ever do, win awards that I ever win them, because you doing it is me doing it. Um, and so sometimes I think about, wow, I would have been doing whatever by now. But if it's meant for you to do, you're going to do it. Because I did get to do those things, walking with Craig. You know, realizing those dreams of, of doing a movie or doing a major documentary for a major company. But my greatest joy is to see you all doing your thing and getting your awards because I walk in those red carpets. We used to say it all the time. You know, if I walk a red carpet, you're going to walk it. You're going to walk it more than me. And that's really what it's about. And that's a part of the God's calling is each one reach one, teach one, and y'all take it to the next level. So it's really not a sacrifice, it's a calling. Yeah, I tend to agree with uh, Robin. It, it truly is a calling. Um, it's something that you, I was meant to do. I mean, certainly I could have, instead of migrating to Minneapolis, what was Minneapolis? I came from Chicago, we do things big. This is true. I could have went to Cali or New York, uh, but great things have happened here for the sacrifice that others say is a sacrifice it actually became a blessing. Uh, you know, I got here, I was able to create a, a platform. Many of you know I own and operate my own TV channel. I mean, uh, you know, I'm one of 10 TV channel owners in the country out of 2,000 TV channels. Uh, 1937 on Comcast is the channel we own. And, it gave me the opportunity and it gives me the opportunity and all the sacrifices that I went to to get where I'm at today continues to give me the opportunity to showcase the amazing stories in my community, amazing people to give back to the community some of what I have in terms of any kind of special grace and blessing of knowing and how to put things together and, and do things and make things happen coming from Chicago, we do it big. <laughs> that is truly a blessing. And so sacrifice, yes, you know, uh, could have been in a warmer climate, but uh, mm -hmm. hey, it's nothing like the Minneapolis sound, That's nothing right. like uh, Minneapolis, and uh, I'm blessed to be here. This is amazing. If you had asked, if you ask other artists, other media makers, um, different collections, you might get a different kind of response to that idea of sacrifice, but this is like really powerful and authentic that it's about those who are coming behind you. It's about, you know, really, I mean, and, and Robin's right, it, it's, it's so powerful to see the results of the work. So yeah, so sacrifice is kind of an interesting word because it's a, it's a different experience. I mean, you know, and it's not even a sacrifice, but might I have been <clears throat> at the time more interested in filmmaking, um, instead of some of the community work, I mean, filmmaking in terms of you know narrative films that are in just the art of film. And I remember uh, when we were toiling away, you know, doing the, the good work in community media. Um, sometimes I would feel that tug and and would see people kind of just doing film for film's sake. And um, but I, I knew it was right, and it helped having mentors like these folks to kind of affirm that. So, um, but it's just interesting to me that you would get different responses from different people in showbiz uh, than you do from, from these amazing folks. Now, did I sacrifice a football career doing all that media in, uh, in high school, maybe? But, what? but that was worth it. We didn't know. Like, yes, know. that's right. I didn't know about that part. That's right. <laughs> all right, so... The next question, and that was a very powerful answer. Could y'all please give a round of applause for that? <laughs> it was wonderful. Um, so the next question is, when did things click and really start taking off? Now, I know me personally, <laughs> I, I can't really pinpoint the moment that it all clicked, but I do know the moment when I knew that this is what I was going to do, and it was literally the kickoff of hype coming back. Mm -hmm. So the when when Essence and I, because um, we used to hop like three buses <laughs> from New Hope, Minnesota to St. Paul. And um, we had went to the kickoff and I saw all them lights and all them cameras and everybody so happy. I was like, how do you do all of that? I need to learn how to do that. And so 
that's when I knew when I wanted to do it, but I don't really know when things clicked. So that's why we're asking y'all this question. Yeah. <laughs> so who wants to start? <laughs> you need to have more than one mic. Yeah, right. I don't know it ever clicked for me at all. I think it's probably still clicking. Okay. Um, that was why we said still clicking. Yeah. Um, I don't know if... Um, yeah, that's a, that's a harder question for me because I, I, I'm not too honest. I, I, I know what has inspired me, so I don't know if it's ever totally clicked. This is, I, this is what I know I'm supposed to do. One was Gordon, um, which is, my mom gave me that book, Choice of Weapons, when the first time I was arrested, and I ain't ashamed to say that I was arrested. Um, at 13, she said, oh, read this book. Um, and it made me understand you know, the, the life weapons over death weapons. That's kind of dedicated myself to like, okay, okay. I think the next time it clicked was when I was in my late early, or late 20s, almost 30, uh, Wilson Yates, who run, used to be head of the theological seminary, told me, art is how you know God. Oh. Um, and um, for me, it realized, he said, you've been called like you've been called like a preacher to do this. and. And he didn't even know me. He heard me talking to some other people about, I just do this like pulp fiction. I don't care what I yeah. do. I'll do whatever, whatever, you know? And he heard me say that. He said, why did you say that? I said, oh, because it's just filmmaking. It doesn't really, it's not going to change. You know? And he said, no, that's not true. Art is, so. so those are the things. And so I think that it's not so much that I've ever sort of say, ooh, I want to do this because I like teaching, as, as they know. Mm -hmm. I, um, I believe in helping and mentoring. Um, Filmmaking, video making, media making are just elements of an overall philosophical approach to life, which is what I have. So, um, yeah, the click moment. That's a cool question, Bianca. And I think that it is kind of a series of clicks. I like that idea. Um, you know, some of it is getting that audience connection, you know, for me as a, a filmmaker in college. And you know, I'm quiet, I'm reticent, and then this film, you know, kind of steps out in a way that I couldn't. And so, you know, kind of connecting with people um, through media, it was an early click point. Um, I definitely, 25 years ago, this winter, when we started production on hype, it was a lot of Robin was doing a lot of work on TPTs. Don't believe the hype in terms of the movement and connecting with you all in community, but. 25 years ago, February, when we kind of really what? kind of brought the young people of color into the studios and really started to make TV. That was a really powerful click moment as well. Um, many of mine are, are with Robin um, in terms of our work together, the Gordon Parks project that Craig directed, being a part of that, being able to interview Gordon um, that you kind of uh, curated when he was in town doing a speech for um, a documentary I did was was absolutely a click mm -hmm. moment. Um, so there, it's clicking along. Um, yeah, but in <laughs> <and, and> the <laughs> idea of this That's is good. right, this is powerful, this is impactful. One just quick story, um, and we're lucky to have someone like you who reminds us yes. of what we've done is meaningful, and that's better than any uh, awards. But I had gotten one indirectly. I'd done an artist residency with, with young black men uh, with Intermedia Arts. And it was a group, and there were some real dynamic young brothers. And then there was one really quiet brother from North High. Hardly said a word the whole week long residency. Years later, my wife's friend works in advertising. And she told my wife, yeah, I interviewed this young uh, you know, creative. And I asked him, how did you get into this work? And he said, well, years ago, I, I had this art experience with this guy named Dan Berg. And so that was <laughs> a powerful know. click moment. Oh, right. Keep on clicking, baby. <laughs> 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 Gotta keep on. That's it. Um, it's a continuous clicking. Um, and I have to say this, and I hope the, you, in essence, never get tired of it. Um, I'm tired. Mm. I really am. And. Um, I click whenever I see the two of you again basking in each other's light. And I never heard you tell the story about how many buses mm -hmm. the two of you got on. Mm -hmm. But that was a click moment seeing the two of you when you came to that production. <laughs> it was elated. Meeting. It didn't matter. Because you could see the light in the <laughs> yeah. two of you, you know, didn't. Uh, that was my first time meeting you, but you know, I grew up with, with, with Essence as people. So that, those lights, when we see those lights in young people that other people dismiss and discount and would suggest that you would, cannot have a light. 
And when it's around media making, again, and you're taking your rightful place, that's exciting. So I've had a number of clicks. Um, definitely um, the click of my uncle entrusting me to have a role mm -hmm. in his life story when I went to meet with him and, and to tell him it's time. And he said, are you ready, baby? Mm -hmm. So it's time, Unc. And him trust. Mm -hmm. um, and then when Craig called and said it was in the can, mm -hmm. and I could call him and look at my grandmother's picture on the mantle and say, it's done, Nana, and your baby brother's alive to see it. And then when Craig called and said, call Gordon, tell him we got an Emmy nomination. And I called him. And that moment, I, was, I was, got off the freeway on 94 and parked the car, I called him. And he said, you did it, baby. That was a click moment. I said, no, no, I'm going no. I said, you did it, baby. <laughs> um, so many moments, but yes, with him, for sure. You know, this, this icon and just moments with him that people will never understand and will never believe, because some folks don't want to believe mm -hmm. that precious time, his affirmation. But just as important as the affirmation that I receive from y'all, my colleagues, and those you brilliant media makers, activists that walked with me and allowed me to walk with you when you were making it happen and discovering the students that I stand in front of in my classrooms. And then when I see they click, then I click again. So we have so much to do. So I'm in the moment right now, I'm solemn because we're in the uh, we're in my mama's time and the anniversary of her sixth year of going to glory. So we're in that time, and on Monday will be the anniversary. So I'm very solemn. Um, when I feel her presence, I click because she's like, "Yep, yeah, you did it. You walked. You were true to your calling." And so when I realize I'm true to my calling, I click. Uh, but we still, her, her theme for her home going was we still have so much work to do. Mm -hmm. So we have so much more clicking to do. You know, it's an ongoing, ongoing journey. But um, I'm clicking seeing you, look at you. Look, look at Essence. So you all doing it in the way that kind of we all kind of showed you how to do it and you keep on playing it forward, that's what's, that's good. That's what makes me smile. Robin, was your KSTP youth reporting a quick moment? KST, oh, oh yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, doing it a long time. I forget. Yes, to do those interviews. George Clinton, Parliament. People don't even know. And a lot of my young people walk with me. Miss Rob, we didn't know you did that. You didn't even tell us you did that. Yes, KSTP steamroller. <laughs> George Clinton, him affirming me. Evelyn Champagne King, yes. <laughs> that was starting starting young and knowing that I could. Thank you, Dan. I almost forgot, Absolutely. but George Clinton. Yeah, wow. Yes. KMOJ Ray, I mean, K K KUXL Radio. Those were click moments, yeah. being a young, young host of a television show. But that's why, you know, people believed that as young people, we could do it. That's what you're doing. I got a chance to do it, but yeah, it reminded me of that, George Clinton. <laughs> I said, how y'all gonna play the Mr. Miss Underwater? They came for the Underwater Boogie Show or whatever, how at the Met Center. How y'all gonna play Ooh, the Mr. Miss Underwater? That was a long underwater? time ago. <laughs> long time. The Met Center. <laughs> I got first half view, yeah. <laughs> all right, I, I sir. think the key is, the, uh, as I listen to all the stories, is you can take a licking and keep, keep on, on clicking. Clicking. Because <laughs> we all take lickings Licking. each and every day. Yes. Um, it's about persistence, consistency in what we do. So, you know, I get a click every day. I, I get a click when I came here. I get a click when I started the Oz nightclub where we oh, brought yeah. people together yeah. every night at the Oz. I got another click when we started the Minnesota <laughs> Black Music Awards for Absolutely. 21 clicks on that <laughs> each year. And, uh, and, I, and, and, and like Robin, I, I get a click now Bianca, when I see you, I told my wife this morning I'm going to sit on Bianca's panel. I'm so proud because I remember you coming to my station, our station, sitting down because you knew you had to learn something to get something, and you were great at it. 
So thank you. Clicking the day. I'm clicking. <laughs> thank you. Oh, man. I'm going to get through it. <laughs> get through it, girl. We can. All right. So this is a very important question. Oh, well, I was like the other one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. These are, those, of course, were amazing. But I'm really excited about this one, though. Seriously. Some of you focus on social justice issues within your work. What led to some of those choices? Wow. Well, I, I mean, I think it's being black in America. Mm -hmm. For me, anyways, I mean, it's just that, uh, I, I mean, I, I, was, I was lucky to be surrounded. I mean, Robert's father has huge influence to me as a, as, as a young man. Um, because again, I don't, we, we didn't actually make anything, but he encouraged us to tap in to what was going on in, in and around us, you know, and in, in, in the environment and the political aspect of it. Um, uh, there was another uh, gentleman, African-American guy who was, came here, um, who, you know, did sat band music awards and stuff like that. I was, I was, yeah, Rashad, I mean, I was like 16 years old. I, d I don't know, didn't know what I des definitely wanted to do, but I knew that I needed to tap into a communication and a media business that actually tapped into people. Um, I think, for me, again, I go back to, and I don't want to talk very much about this, but it's. I think it's important to honor your ancestors. And so, my father said something to me. He's like, you know, know who you are, you know, and remember where you came from. Absolutely. And so, that's what I did. And so, everything that I do, I try to do that. And the things you have to, because you can't just do anything, especially in this media business. And we all know that, you, you know, talk you talk about us giving. Could we all be farther along with more money if yes. we did certain yeah. things, yeah. you know? Absolutely. And and I'm not putting people down who do that. It's just that, you know, it's like I ain't changing my name. This is who I am, and so I wanted that people know my grandfathers, my great grandfathers, my great grandmothers, my great, you know, this is who you are. I'm from you, so I don't want to embarrass you, you know, by what I do today. Mm. Amen. Yeah. So I know every every day. <clears throat> that, uh, like Craig said, is our ancestors. It's about standing on their shoulders and continuing to provide a shoulder that could be stood on. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, people so much talk about the crab in a barrel, how we pull each other down, but they never talk about how we prop each other up. That's right. And so, so basically, you know, what we do is what we do because of who we are. You know, so say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. I got to do what I must do for the people that I do it for. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was raised to question authority. Um, and also, I was thinking, I remember my mother used to put political cartoons on the refrigerator. She'd cut them out. She'd write letters to the editor, and she'd get them published. And she'd put political cartoons on the refrigerator like Craig. I started drawing. And that need um, and want to say something and say it loud um, and question authority Media's been a powerful way to do that. Um, and Paul Robeson said, the artist must take sides. You know, the artist must decide um, to be on a side. And, and of course, Gordon Parks talks a lot about that. And we all are, because of Robin and Craig, um, following in that. And so to me, it's, um, you know, it's just a natural extension of, of um, you know, kind of who I am and the issues that are important to me and being able to use media to, um, to address that has been really cathartic. And it is the right choice of weapons because you need to speak, you need to say something and do something. And if not for you know, the healthy creative weapons, you, know, mm -hmm. you see why people choose others. Back to that residency I did, I remember we were in downtown Minneapolis and so we were in um, Hennepin Center for the Arts mm -hmm. and these young men looked out the window and there was a cop with a brother against the wall. And this is early 90s, so this is right after Rodney King. Mm -hmm. And they looked at me and they said, could, should we get the cameras? I'm like, let's go. And we have, I have footage of them right. approaching these officers and, and disarming them in a way where mm. the cops kind of step back, like, wait, what are you doing? And they yeah. kind of broke up a moment. And so wow. it's a powerful choice of weapons. Wow. So Dan, you did that, and I'm so glad you, you shared that, because you did that many, many years before folks started pulling out those cell phones. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, got you. Yeah, did you uh, Again, in, in, in honor of my mother, Patricia Frazier Hickman, and I lifted up Daddy and Number and Craig, you did, um, Bobby Hickman. Uh, my parents' child, you know. Um, my mother raised us to, again, take our rightful place in the world. 
Um, she also raised us with the wisdom, be humble but know your worth. Uh, Daddy was out there radical, but she, he had nothing on Patty. Uh, Mama was uncompromising, uncompromising when it came to the love of her people and the children of the village. Um, I know in our history, I'm truly in love with our village. The aunts, my, my village godmothers and godfathers, those, those men with the Katie Maguas, the Makbu del the yeah. I can go on and on and on. They planted those seeds. I believe we've lived the answers we seek today. Um, and I try to the best of my ability to instill the richness that we receive, the, the, the activism, uncompromising, the, the history and the young people that you know, we poured into. It's just, it just is. You know, it's, it's just, so we have to be about some Sankofa and go back and reclaim that which we've lost. Mm -hmm. And so I would say in some cases we're, that was stolen. But we've lived those answers that we seek today. And so it just came honestly, just love of history, um, love of knowing, um, had opportunity to go to Ghana, yes. went on the trip. Those pictures. In 94, oh, and went back, and we got went to the Elmina Slave Castle, to a place where they masterminded we'd never returned to. And we did, we returned. We returned, and that's a testament to how amazing and powerful miracle people we are. So knowing that, and instilling that in young people, um, how could I not? And I'm now, I said, I'm going into 2018 in the spirit of FUBU. All right now. For <laughs> us, by us, unapologetically. <laughs> but um, it yes. works, it's good. Robin, can I, because this is real important, Bianca, because social know. justice, and I, I, I love to see what I'm seeing um, with young people today, but what these three have done and what you do is building something. It's movement yeah, building, it's institution building. building, it's business, and that's where we need to go. So social justice, protest, and then like nation building, and yes. you changing the way an HBO does a miniseries, changing the name to name it after your community. Our street. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, and what yeah, you no, and Craig say Because Robin, that, that Laurel Avenue was the first dramatic series yes. on HBO. First dramatic series on HBO. And the reason it's called Laurel Avenue is because of Robin. I mean, <laughs> it was, I forgot even what it was, Clinton Avenue or something. I forgot what it was, <laughs> Sanford Avenue or something. Show, you know? Sheldon Avenue. Yeah, oh, Sheldon <laughs> Avenue, that's what it was called. I knew it was nothing to do with where we are, but that was Robin. She, she claimed that show as part of what St. Paul at the time sort of was about, and I think that was really that was powerful. That was yes. that was Rob, and I give probably all the credit for that. Oh. You know, because <laughs> everybody else would say why. I said, well, no, because this is what she's saying. Listen to what she's saying. You know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just too much. Yeah. But institution building, yeah. and that's I think what we have to be about is grooming them up so that again, taking our rightful place, building institutions, building our businesses, and not being afraid to do it, and that means supporting our each other's institutions. It's the spirit of FUBU. We ain't mad at nobody yeah. else. We, we, James Baldwin said it's time for lovers of humanity to find one another. Mm. Yeah, and but I, we have to build up and get back to that FUBU. I yeah, said it again. Yeah, so, <laughs> well, and I think that, that also for me specifically, it was because, again, I started to go down another path for a minute there. It was, it's like Chuck D says, if you can't change the friends around you, change the friends around you. It was really... Mm. Growing up with, you know, me getting in touch with Gary Hines, we just did a thing with Gary Hines and I, you know, we drifted together. We've been friends since we were in teenagers, uh, is, uh, say to the same situation mm. with people who actually kind of, you know, have the same kind of mindset because there's, there's two paths that we could have taken. It, what we wanted to be together and support each other and continue to talk about it. Takuma, you know, all those mm. cats that are as artists out there now who are involved in the community who are trying to do things, you know, and everybody on this panel here. I mean, I've known, I mean, this brother, I mean, I remember I, we're, I was in, he was down the hall from, when he came here, he was he had his little radio station, he was down the hall from my editing, and so I, all night I would oh, come down and awesome. he'd play records, we'd sit and he'd play records on the radio, we'd just sit there and talk, you know, you know, it was great, I loved it. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. We got, it. okay. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm like, which, there's one last question that I want to sneak in, but we'll, we'll see. I'm saying to myself, edit this part out, Bianca. <laughs> 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 All right, so the last question. So each panel has about five questions, tops. I threw this one in, so we'll see how this goes. You are given a very small budget, but are expected to have a great outcome. 
how have you made that work? I know all of you have had that situation at one time or another. And so I just wanted to give those tidbits to some of our upcoming access producers who most of the time don't have any budget. Um, so I would love for you to give them some, some tips or, or recall a time where it was like, really? How am I supposed to do this? <laughs> Y'all get budgets? <laughs> I'm telling you. You get budget. <laughs> In my world, we have to create a budget. Uh, you got to take a look at it, you know, and see how you can do some of the things to cut some of the corners to get to where you need to be. But at the end, it needs to be great. You start out from that premise. It has to be great. All aspects of it, whatever you're doing, it has to be great. So that means that you may have to do some things for free. Or you, I still owe Jimmy Jam $25, I think, you know. <laughs> $25 for doing something for us. I, I talked to him about it a couple weeks ago. Oh, that's he said, funny. oh, I let it go. No, oh, that's hilarious. But you never have enough to do everything that you need to do it with. You just have to work it out and make it happen. Uh, shake it up and make it happen, as we always say. And uh, you can find a way. Because if, if you could not not do what you do, you wouldn't be there. So find true. a way. Oh, they don't want to talk on the other end. Of <laughs> <laughs> hey, they um, made magic, okay? Uh, well, I've no, seen it. <laughs> yeah, it, well, I, you know, I think, um, how, how do you do it? And first of all, I've heard how, and on a real production level, I will, I will speak, is first of all, be honest to people about what you actually have. Don't promise what you don't have um, so that you can really look them in the eye and say, listen, I have no money, but I need you to do this, and I'll try to pay you back however we can, but I think that's the first thing. I think the second thing is sometimes you have to scale back your concept to fit into what you can really do, because like to, to Pete's thing, it's gotta be top quality all the time, it's, you know, especially for, uh, uh, media people of color specifically because our stuff has to be really, really, really good. I was in L.A. When I went to film school at L.A., there was a joke in the studios, if you want a project to fail, give it to a black filmmaker. Okay? Yeah. So, you know, and it be, it, it, so we, we can't outreach what we have, but if, 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 if it's one shot, it should be the best shot that you can take lit properly, sound properly, because it's going to be the sample of whatever you do. So quality is the key. So if you think you're going to have horses running across a creek, and that may not happen. Maybe you might get a horse in a field. One you know, horse. One horse. You know, one. Then that's what you do. So you really kind of des decide what can we afford to do. So you, f you fit, the, fit the project into the envelope that you actually can afford to do. And young filmmakers and young media makers have to understand is that, that there is no infinity pool in Malibu in your future. You have to get the images of Hollywood and all those magazines out of your head that, you know, a Lamborghini for $250,000 is not something that you need. You know, so you kind of have to get back to reality. You are a worker, you know, in this business. And unfortunately, Hollywood sells, as they do in the music industry, they sell this extravagance and collection of materials, um, which is not really part of your future. What your future is is to make the best work. So sometimes you got to pour your own money and the money that you were going to make into what you're doing in order to keep moving forward till you get to the next project, the next project, the next project. And you may get a house on Laurel Avenue, but it, you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> and that's fine because it'll be as long as there's heat on and running water, then you're fine. You right. know? Give a, we give samples of the different, I'm coming from, again, the spirit of mama, be humble but know your worth. And I think it's high time, it's our time to start having some budgets. <laughs> because we've given away stuff for too long. Um, um, you have to pay your dues, yes, when you're coming. This ain't the place to do it. Have a reputation so folks will want to maybe give you a, give you, you ask for something, you got me. Okay, there's some folks who just got me because I'm gonna show up and give whatever I can. But then there's sometimes there's folks don't call me to have coffee to pick my brain. Mm. That's called consulting. Because in order to build our institutions, in order for Dan to continue to be in where he is at because we need to be up in these places and represent, yes, and you have done it well and we are so grateful but the day comes when Dan wants to do his institution, in addition to what he's doing, he needs to be able to be able to do that. And you have the resources, and you have the resources, because us coming together talking about what budgets we ain't got, that's over. It needs to be over. We've paid too many dues. So the pig brain days need to be over. 
and come and with a dollar amount. we need to have the budgets and build our <laughs> institutions so the next generations can feel confident to have. I want to write the ch big check to support somebody's project. I want to. Ha I want to have my bank account bank account match my philanthropist spirit. Yes, that's where I'm at right now. And Robin, that's. I mean, that's what you and Craig did with um, with the film, the Gordon yes. Parks film. You would have done it anyway. We would have done it, but you. You, you told Sheila Nevins and HBO they need to do this, and they were lucky to do it with you. Um, that's, that's what you did with Don't Believe the Hype, so Bianca and I could have that experience, was you know, the, the foundations and Twin Cities Public Television needed to support it in a way that it was uh, valued its worth and our worth. So I think that's right on. I mean, practically speaking, you know, the adage is, if you want to make movies, you got to make movies. You know, it's true. Um, the good, fast, and cheap, pick two, you know, those are real things and things that, you know, we need to know. Education sounds cliche and corny, but you really do, do need to yes. learn. And some of your other panelists with these sessions will help people really learn about learning the technology and the business. Um, but, but yeah, our stories deserve it. Um, and we need, to, um, we need to find and in craft that beauty that is in the community and it takes resources, but I'll tell you, it's a lot easier to do it now in this digital era than it was right. yeah. when you had Definitely. to. When I was introduced to credit card debt <laughs> with my student film, it was a you know award-winning student film, but that that was at kind of high risk. And so now it is easier. So, but it's about story and not just the kind of the nice uh, DSLR cameras. Right. So. That is the best way to end it. <laughs> Seriously, we only have a couple minutes left or at least 60 seconds left so i'll see if y'all can do this but if you could give just one word to everyone out there that can give them a piece of advice just one word that would help them work focus community mm -hmm. purpose all right well there you have it Thank you, panelists. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Thank you very much. And we will be having the writers panel come up next. Thank you for watching. <laughs>